certainly don't want to be exposed to chemical weapons falling in the hands of Hezbollah or other terror groups because that's that's something that we uh, uh, we can't be indifferent to. It's it's a great threat. We'll we'll have to consider uh, our action. But do I preclude? Do I seek action? No. Do I preclude it? No. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Fox News Sunday yesterday talking about the situation in Syria. Let's talk about it with our panel. David Drucker, Associate Politics Editor for Roll Call. A.B. Stoddard, Associate Editor of The Hill. And syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer, welcome to you all. David, I want to start with you. Um, what do you make of Netanyahu's words? He was certainly bold and, and uh, very persuasive yesterday. I think he's trying to make the point that Israel doesn't think Iran is playing by any sort of sanctions or negotiations rule and that they're not going to wait to find out if it doesn't work out that well for them. And I think that when you go on a, a U.S. Sunday show um, and you're the prime minister or the president of another country, you have a message to convey. And I think this was a very, it's a polite way for Benjamin Netanyahu to communicate to President Barack Obama and his administration that as far as he's concerned, the clock is ticking, that they want to do things with American help. They don't want to do anything that makes it appear as though there's a rift. But if it's a choice between a rift and protecting uh, Israel uh, as the prime minister sees it, they're going to protect Israel. And speaking of the president, he did address this today. Here's a bit of what President Obama had to say about the situation in Syria. Today we're also working for a transition so the Syrian people can have a better future, free of the Assad regime. And given the regime's stockpiles of chemical weapons, we will continue to make it clear to Assad and those around him that the world is watching and that they will be held accountable by the international community and the United States should they make the tragic mistake of using those weapons. And AB Today, Syria, you know, acknowledging it's got these weapons then sort of backing off of that, uh, but saying they would only use them if they were, you know, attacked by a foreign source. What do you make of this? And do you think the president's drawn a, a strong enough line in the sand? Well, the statement from the Syrians that they're not going to use um, these weapons, but they want us to know that they have them, is, is meaningless because all along they, this civil war that's going on there has been characterized by the, Syri by the Assad regime as a threat from an external threat of terrorism from the outside, and they often accuse um, th their own people who are battling them of, of, of being agents of other countries and everything. So they will use them if they must, and they have no problem with slaughtering their own, and that's what we've seen in the last year. And it was implicit in the prime minister's very, very, I think his most forceful comments to date, that they see Syria as a proxy war with Iran, that they um, are there's rising fear among the Israelis that um, these chemical weapons will become a threat to them across the border, that um, the administration is not doing enough in Syria and not uh, holding Iran accountable for its nuclear ambitions at the same time. And I thought, you know, we were recently polled and Charles said that he believed that an attack from the Israelis might come before the election. I said I thought it would come after. But I think I'm, I'm, um, I've changed my mind in what he said. He really made it clear that they will have to act with or without our help. And Charles, what do you think is the impact of the prime minister's statements? Well, I think he's sending a message, but there are two separate issues, Iran and Syria. Syria is a more uh, pressing question right now because they've now admitted what everybody knew, they have chemical and biological weapons. Uh, the problem for the Israelis is that when Obama said it would be a tragic mistake if the regime used them, for the Israelis, the issue isn't the use of these weapons. That would be so reckless it would be uh, incomprehensible. The problem for the Israelis is that Assad might transfer the weapons to Hezbollah. Uh, because remember, Hezbollah is a client of Iran, as is the regime in Syria, so they're, or even to, uh, to Iran. So what you're talking about here are weapons that would be in the hands of, for example, Hezbollah, who are responsible for the attack that just happened last week in Bulgaria, the slaughtering of young Israelis on a bus in Bulgaria, whose leader has declared that his aim is not just the destruction of Israel, but the genocide of the Jews in Israel. He, he talks often about that killing every last one, and this would give them the weaponry to destroy them in the hundreds of thousands. If the Israelis have any inkling of a transfer of the weapons, the Israelis have teams and they will not wait for the UN, they're not going to wait for the Russians, they're not going to wait for the United States. The Israelis will go in and they'll either seize them or destroy them. It could be risky. These things are always risky. But there's nobody standing right now between a transfer of the weapons 
into the hands of uh, Hezbollah other than the Israelis themselves. If Israel does take that type of action, proactively steps out and, and tries to get its hands on what they suspect are these munitions, um, David, what does that do for the U.S.? Does it force our hand? Do we take a role in that? Do we take a hands-off approach? I think we take a hands-off approach. That's what the administration has tried to do in the Middle East. That's what American politics really calls for right now because I think we're war wary. But I do think if Israel does do this, they'll get a lot of private quiet thank you notes from around the region and probably from the U.S. Uh, for taking this action. And it, it, as Charles mentioned, it's not even just the transfer of the weapons um, purposely. It's what happens if the regime falls, which we expect it to, and who takes over? Who then has possession of these weapons? And this is a country right on Israel's border. Um, and this could cause a wider problem if Israel feels it needs to defend itself against a new regime, if there's an attack, or if they feel they need to be proactive, and if Iran decide that it wants to maintain a client-state relationship, and all of a sudden this could become a wider conflagration. And there's one other factor which makes it even more immediate a threat. The Syrians have weaponized their chemical weapons. In other words, they already have them on missiles. All it takes is a push of the button, and they end up in Tel Aviv, where sarin gas can kill in the tens of thousands. So for Israel, isn't, it isn't even a slow transfer to Hezbollah or to Iran or to Al-Qaeda if the regime uh, collapses. It could be instantaneous, and that's why the Israelis are not going to wait. They never wait. As this is all playing out, we know that Mitt Romney is preparing to travel overseas. Israel is one of the spots he's going to visit where he'll meet with leaders. Uh, A.B., today, uh, Robert Gibbs, who is senior advisor now for Obama for America, said that there's a lot of pressure. Is this just a photo op? Are we going to find out more about Mitt Romney's foreign policy and where he stands? Uh, how much is riding on this trip? A lot. Um, it's a great change of topic for Mitt Romney. He's had a rough couple of weeks answering a lot of um, attacks from the Obama campaign on his taxes and stuff. Uh, he wants to position himself on the world stage with an important ally at an important time of crisis for Israel um, and affirm his support for Israel, uh, trying to create a contrast with President Obama without criticizing him so strongly that he comes under fire for doing that um, when he, there's only one president and, you know, criticism stops at the water's edge. So I would imagine that that's a little bit of a straddle for him, but they definitely want him to make a few speeches that create um, his own vision, uh, foreign policy vision that's separate from the president's. Charles, you're itching to answer. Can you do it quickly? Uh, <laughs> probably not. Relatively Charles quickly. Probably not, but I'll give it a shot. He will not say anything that will attack Obama. He's not going to criticize the United States. It's the, and it isn't even what he says. It's the choice of countries. Britain, Poland, and Israel, all of which have been dissed by the Obama administration. In, with the Britain, the United States, intervening in the Falcons to uh, dispute unbelievably unnecessarily with the Poles undercutting the missile de defense system and with Israel all the tension that Obama has generated between him and the Israelis. All Romney has to do is to show up and that will make a statement. I will stand with our, our friends and I will oppose our enemies and the implication will be unlike the president. All right. We'll leave it there on this topic panel. Thank you. Next.